Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I have a new guest that I just met. His name is Jesse Harding. He is a martial arts and wellness. I want to call you a professor, but he, <laughs> he's an instructor, and I think you are the director of the center in Valari. Is that it's, uh, Middletown, Rhode Island. Middletown, Rhode Island. Uh, Valari's Martial Arts. Valari's Martial Arts. Welcome to the show, and I'm yeah. so glad you made the trip today. The Cape is a little better on traffic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a relief. My dad lives down here, so. He does? I, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Wonderful. Are you going to see him? I might. You might? Yeah. Okay. You have a journey, and you have a story to tell, because because you're a martial arts practitioner, I mm -hmm. would like to call you a movement therapist artist. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. How in the world did you get there? And did you know early on, um, this is a very spiritual practice. Yeah. Um, how did it all get started? I think as a little kid, I just loved martial arts and ninja movies and oh. kung fu and <laughs> Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. And Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bruce was, Lee, of Bruce course. Bruce Lee. I oh. love Bruce Lee. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hot stuff. <laughs> so, so you kind of just got, did you imitate them as a little kid or anything? Um, or? I did, yeah. I used to walk around in ninja suits and stuff and <laughs> climb trees yeah. and I had all the toy little ninja weapons and, oh. and uh, the Karate Kid movie. Oh. I saw that like three times in the oh. movie theater and then right after that I started the martial arts. I had a Star Wars child. Yeah, so, me too. I was a Star Wars oh, child. The gosh. Jedi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you really just had this attraction. Yeah. It's been a passion since I was a little kid. Now, was it the was there an adventure to it, or were you sensing the healing part, or all of it? I think there was the, always that sense of the spiritual aspect of it that really drew me in. Yeah. You know, the Jedi and, and, yeah. and the Shaolin, yeah. the Shaolin Temple, oh. and, uh, you know, all the philosophy. And yeah. Just, yeah. All right. Early on, did you have any training? Did you tell your mom, I want to study, I want to go? Yeah. Well, after the Karate Kid <laughs> came out, I had a good friend. His name was Patrick, and his, uh, his grandmother brought us to the karate school. Oh. And we went for a while, and I got really into it. And yeah. then he decided to quit, and then I ended up stopping because of that. Oh. <clears throat> but what then friends I, for. Yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up going to Billy Blanks, who became famous for Tai Bo. Now, what is that? Um, well, he had a school in Quincy. I grew oh, up in Quincy. Okay, okay. So I went to him for maybe a little less than a year, and but then he became famous, which was kind of cool to see him. Oh. You know, because he's my old teacher, and then I went back to Valari's. So you had an impressive teacher. Someone was yeah, really, he was really, really good. Yeah, he was like a world champion. You showed up in your bare feet, <laughs> and your little outfit. Yeah. And and the clothes. This may sound silly, but they have to be able to move with you. I mean, you can't have anything that would be uncomfortable on. Correct. Yeah, the the clothing that yeah, you wear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is like a Tai Chi kind That's of a beautiful. thing. And I've I've been wearing Between this since I was a and kid. The Pope. <laughs> <laughs> I walk around like this all the time. I mean, this is just how I grew up. So <laughs> it's fairly natural for me. Yeah. So you um, now did you just find your passion was building about more? I want more classes. I want to do this more and more and more. Because I did this with ballet. It was like more and more and more. Um, did you just keep building, doing more, and it finding it a routine and? It was just something deep in my heart and soul that, like, I yeah. just, it just drove me. Like, I just, I was called to it so strongly yeah. that, like, I would yeah. do it all the time. Like, I just couldn't imagine my life without At it. At home. Your mother At would home. catch you. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of funny stories, actually, of my ninja days. I, you, you said you like slapstick. I love it. And my mom's over there watching, so I could tell you this funny story. Uh, uh, don't listen, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to just like walk behind people and like see if I could be really quiet and not let them, you know, know I was there and then say hi and they go, ah! and they'd freak out and I'd put my Darth Vader mask on and, and hide in my grandmother's closet and she was like, oh, you're going to give me a heart attack. Oh my gosh. Oh. And then one time my mom was sleeping, it was like three in the morning and I was in the other room and she got up to go to the bathroom. So I snuck into her room and hid myself flat under her pillows. <laughs> So she comes back in, she's tired, she comes into the bed, puts her head down, and I'm just laying there, I'm waiting. <gasps> and then I went, ah! She jumped out of the bed, the f <laughs> covers went everywhere. Better your mom <laughs> than me. <laughs> so I was just, you know, a mischievous, you know, having fun kid. And, yeah. But I have lots of stories like when that. When I first met you, I could just tell immediately how pleasant and easy you were and that you were fun. Yeah. Immediately. My fun jeans went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I work with kids all the time. Oh, you so do. So I have to, 
you know, have that playful spirit to yeah. work with kids. Yeah. Wally, just as young yeah. as three and a half, and oh. big groups of kids, 20 to 30 kids. And oh, that must bring out a lot of fun in you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah every day. Do you play parts to get them to do things? Because you have very expressive big eyes. And yeah, yeah. I do exaggeration sometimes to make yeah. points and little role playing and yeah. get them engaged. And yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. So you're a, t a full time teacher. Full time teacher. So yeah. I want to make sure we don't miss part of this journey. So oh, I'm sure. seeing you going through all the school. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you went to college. Did you study this? What, what I happened? I went to uh, Salve Regina okay. University in Newport, and um, okay. I grew up in Quincy. Yeah. Uh, I went to Boston College High School with okay. the Jesuits. So I'm, I'm picking up a Catholic background. Yep, I had a Catholic background, but also a spiritual background because yeah. my aunt is Vicky. Ah, good friends with you, with the Course Vic. of Miracles. So yes, yes. Growing up, there'd be these huge Course of Miracles <laughs> events and parties, and yeah. I'd be sneaking around in my ninja suit and <laughs> hiding in the bushes. I'm like, they're not going to see me, so I'm going to start moving. And I start moving, and they're like, is that a cat? What is that? <laughs> and I'd be like, ah, and I'd. I bet Vicky was hoping you didn't show up. <laughs> I just blend yeah. in. Yeah. So, you, so along with the, the Catholic upbringing, which is beautiful, you had a course in miracles, yeah. and you can. And Vicky combines the two very yeah. beautifully. Yeah. And then eventually, the, the in, in high school, we read a book called Jesus Before Christianity. Oh. I think his name was Albert Nolan, and that book had a huge impact on me because I started to learn about Jesus and learn, you know, what his teachings were. Yeah. And it was without any particular tradition, but it was just looking at. The More man. like a scholarly perspective. Oh, interesting. And then around that same time, Marianne Williamson's book, A Return oh, to Love, came out. I know. And that was like the first book I really opened me up. That and, was well done. Yeah, and I read it like 20 times, and I took notes, and I drew pictures in the yeah. book. And yeah. then I got to see Marianne a bunch of times with my family, and that was a huge thing. Oh, nice. And then when I finally went to college, um, I took a class on Eastern philosophy my freshman year. And that, I'm like, that's it. This is what I'm doing, man. Yeah. I started learning about the Taoism, Buddhism, yeah. Hinduism, all oh. this stuff. And I was like... You gobbled that up. I gobbled it up. I took. I used to take... There was a professor there, Jim Hirsch. Yeah. He was like my favorite philosophy teacher. And I used to take his classes two to three times yeah. just because Did I was you? so enthusiastic. Yeah. I would just, you know, audit them, just sit yeah. in. Yeah. And then I became, um, eventually became the head of the philosophy club for about three or four years. And we'd have guests come in and I would facilitate. And yeah and just had a passion for all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I had that same hunger with a religion, world religions. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, 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 the exact same feeling you had, I couldn't do it enough. I wanted to repeat it and repeat it and repeat yeah, it. it yeah, yeah. I could see all the similarities and the links between all of them. Yeah, the personalities me too, me too. were different. Yeah. Um, which I think is true. Yeah, I mean, you start to see the common threads and where they all yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. And the truth behind, yeah, the different cultures. and. So we're still in college now. You're head yeah. of the philosophy club. Do you have guest speakers come in and that kind I of thing? I did, yeah. We used to have like TM people come in. And ah. We have um, a guy from China that was uh, getting his PhD in Taoism came. Ah. We'd have different professors come and we'd talk about all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, so found, I found that attendance was low, so if I said, we're going to talk about God, but then I'd write in sex, ah. I'd have like tons of people would come <laughs> and say, free food, sex, God, come on in. A winning trio. This well, that's the, is that the Holy Trinity? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I got creative. You did. But to get people to come in, but then we'd be talking about all these things, yeah. and we'd have a lot of fun. Oh, and, and the other thing in college I did, which was kind of funny, is I had this underground kind of radio station through through the voicemail system, because back then we didn't have cell phones. It oh, was in the '90s. Hard to believe. We did. I know. Isn't it crazy to think back before there were cell phones? And that was only like. 20 years ago maybe 15 years okay, ago okay yeah so I found a way to hack into the phone system uh -huh. and I found these distribution lists and I would put people on my list oh put me on the list and I'd send an inspirational message every day oh like a, you know a quote from a movie or just an inspiring thing or just joking around or hey I'm with this guy and you know we're doing this thing and and more and more people wanted to be put on the list before uh -huh. you know it I had like 200 250 <laughs> people on this list it's like this underground thing uh -huh. And uh, the funny story is, I, I crashed the entire phone system <gasps> at the college. Sweet. Because <laughs> I overloaded it so much because the kids would move from a room and I'd still keep sending the message. <gasps> and it started eating away at the memory. Oh, my God. So I, I got a call from the tele... Well, I don't even think... I think we had to send somebody. The phone system wasn't working. And the telecommunications lady's like, you destroyed the phone system. You were what if there's an emergency? What did you do? Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe this. And she's like freaking out. <laughs> oh, my God. So I just... And she was like, you, you're you getting in so much in trouble for this. And I just smiled. I'm like, oh, you know, what can I do to help? And yeah. by the end, she gave me a big hug. And yeah. She's like, you're great, and you know, oh, 
sweet. But, but it was crazy. But it could be fixed. It could be fixed. It could be fixed. So you're still in college. Still in college. Still in college. Okay. A lot, so, of, lot, lot happened in college because I got my master's and I got a CAGS. So you're still in the same school. I spent about nine years in college. Why not? Because I went right from my undergrad. Yeah. I double majored in philosophy and psychology. I minored in religious studies. And then I got my master's in holistic counseling. Okay. Oh. And then right from there, I went into expressive arts therapy. Oh, wow. And then with all this, I was always doing the martial arts. And Mr. That, Academia, too. Yeah, oh, I, my I was God. really studious. You're a, a professional student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll that, bet you'll be again. Yeah, it's a, you know, do it's, we ever learn? I mean, and stop learning, you right? You don't. No, there'll be something that'll crop up that you'll say, I have to add to my yeah. Well, resume. Yeah, you're learning and growing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was uh, some mentors in the martial arts. Uh, John Fritz had a huge, has, is still my mentor, had a huge influence on me. Yeah. He's a ninth degree black belt and he's taught me a lot of the Tai Chi and Qigong and the internal healing arts and yeah. a bunch of other people it, really inspired me. Your mission me. was just so obvious, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was probably stamped right here. I've always followed it <coughs> as yeah. a vocation, you know, follow your bliss. Yeah. You know, that is, we have to tell our friends now, let's, let's say that again. Follow your bliss. Follow your bliss that and is, all the doors open. All the doors open. Do what you love. Yeah. Don't do what someone thinks you should do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or what dad did or it's what runs true. in the family. Yeah, yeah. Stay true to your purpose you yeah. know, and everything comes to and you. And then everything works out and unfolds and then it, life happens to you when you do that. Then things come to you and you say, aha. You know, you <laughs> keep getting those wonderful suggestions. You must chuckle, too, when you get them the way I do. I think, okay, <laughs> you know, it's nice to be guided. Yeah, yeah, and to see that and to uh, recognize the grace that's always happening. Always. Just tuning into it. Yeah, yeah. Trusting it, even when you're in the dark and scary times. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good times, too, dark yeah. and scary times. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's the warriorship uh, in the martial arts, is yeah. to have that knowingness inside. Yeah, yeah. So are we still in college? Are we can we go wherever you want. Well, are we there are nine a, years? So you've got, lot, lot so you got college, a double yeah. masters, um, holistic counseling, and I'm trying to just follow this. Follow the thread of it. Follow the yellow brick road. Yeah, and then I got involved in knife fighting. Knife and fighting? Knife with knives. Oh, knives. Knives and sticks, Filipino-based stuff with uh, Tom Sotis oh, wow. and the Amok system, and uh, I've been doing that since Now, you 99. can't get hurt, can you, with those things? They're not real uh, We have different types of equipment for different types of training. So if we're going to spar yeah. really hard, we we'll use foam. If we're going to go, you know... Um, rubber little, knives? We, <laughs> rubber doesn't work so good they bend. Um, but we use all kinds of stuff. Aluminum, plastic. So nobody can get hurt. Pain, not injury. <laughs> That's the motto. <laughs> do you... Do you do, I mean, when I see that, a flash in my mind see, sees them almost juggling a little bit. Do you get... Juggling knives? Do you do, you do that? Do you, do you know uh, what I mean? Maybe I'm thinking sometimes of circus. the knife falls and you catch it. Yeah, yeah not thinking of a circus. But they come out. Oh yeah, and they, then they throw the yeah, thing so at the lady spinning. So that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about fighting. More combative. Combative. Defending yourself against somebody that would have a knife or a weapon, and then oh. learning to use different types of weapons. And okay. it's an art form, but it's very practical too. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that added to your resume. Yeah. And where are we now? Where do we want to go? Well, are we still in college? Or are we out now getting a job? I guess I'm trying to it follow. It kind of segued because uh, eventually I, my, my instructor retired. And just as he was kind of retiring, I ended up taking over the school. Oh. And so then it just kind of flowed to me. And he started the school in 1985 oh. on the island. And Fred Villari started his first school in 1968 okay. in Waltham, Mass. And uh, I, was, I think there's over 200 to 300 locations all around the country in Canada over many years, oh. the Valari system. Oh. And my teacher started his location in Rhode Island, where I am, in Middletown. And then yeah. I took over around 2001. Okay. Well, no, 2003, officially. Okay. I, yeah. So you are director. Director. Chief instructor. Chief instructor. That's the title, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. I looked at your website, which I hope our friends will, because we oh, have sure. it on um, our show. Why don't you tell us what it is again, your website address? Okay, it's valaris-ri.com, and All it's right. also com. Okay. We have a couple different ones, but okay. those two will get you there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So now you are a full-time instructor. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that How was full another time chapter. Full-time is full-time. Full-time is like Ugh. at least 40 classes a week or more, wow. private lessons, teaching kids. Um, I teach at senior centers. 
I've oh, been teaching you? there since like the late 90s. The senior centers? Yeah, oh. Tai Chi and Qigong. Oh, good, perfect. Yeah, they're really popular classes. Yes, they are. 20 to 30 students sometimes or more. Um, do you do any defense for women or anything like I that? I do those too, yeah, women's self-defense oh, classes. Yeah. Okay. I've been trained in a whole thing called managing criminal assaults. There's a whole website on that. Um, oh, really? And that's teaching um, pre-fight pre technology for the things to say and do yeah. and how to posture yourself if somebody were to approach you, yeah. to assault you, yeah. and just so you can feel good about um, yeah. Declaring your space and yeah, what to yeah, do. Jesse. Spirituality just takes so many beautiful. Yeah. There's so many mediums, but yeah. I mean, you are a spiritual being who is doing your work through movement mm -hmm. and trainings, and you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, I just think teaching is 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 key for all of yeah. us. I think we are all teachers somehow. I think we all need to to feel better living in a world that it, that it looks like it's a tough world mm -hmm. for us to be mm -hmm. sharing our truth and two and three gathering together is the way to go it's a way to get through here it's yeah. a way to make it work yeah yeah so you found your way you found your mission yeah yeah it's really rewarding work yeah. you know you think you'll be at the studio for a while yeah, and we're actually in the process of expanding the school. So oh. there was a hair salon um, next door, and, and they moved out. Oh. And by it, no accident. By no accident. It was all divine timing. <laughs> I'm watching it all happen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so now we took down the wall, and we're making it bigger and newer, oh. and we're going to look to make it more of a holistic center as well. Oh. Offering maybe counseling and maybe life skills coaching. Okay. Potentially massage, more meditation, maybe having workshops and things. Yeah. Do you do yoga? I do Taoist and Tibetan yoga. Ah, yeah, don't know and Qigong. Okay. And some some traditional yoga, but more it's more the yeah. Taoist, Chinese, and Tibetan yeah. flavor. Well, you know what's so beautiful when I think of, of, about a spiritual practice. I mean, you go into a church and there's beautiful atmosphere, or there's Gregorian chant, or there's a smell of incense, and you walk into one of your studios and there's a beautiful. I don't know whether you have sound or whether it's just people take their shoes off and yeah. come in quietly and prepare themselves to to be in sort of a church kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like a temple. Like a temple. Yeah. yeah that's move, what it feels like. Yeah. So that's a, a way to express your spiritual practice. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So when you're, what does it feel like? Because I have taken some classes. When you're all moving together in sync, mm. I mean, it must be an amazing feeling with the energy going yeah. around the room. Yeah, it's like the entrainment, you know, when birds fly together or fish move together. And you're all tapping into this Tai Chi field effect. Yeah. And in China, I think they did research where they have large groups of people doing the Tai Chi and Qigong, and people in hospitals, they heal faster. Oh. You know, like when they do the large groups of people meditating? Yes. Crime rates go down, and people yeah. get out of hospitals sooner. And yeah. There's this, this vibration and healing yeah. that you step into. It's very know, sacred. And yeah, and there's something about doing it in a group, yeah. in the community. Yeah. Because you can do it by yourself, and that's yeah. that's fun too. There's that but there's something ab there's something about the group the aspect of I it. I think community. two and three gathered together is <coughs> just a magic formula for yeah. Yeah. Buddha, for so much. Yeah. 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 I was going to say Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the same. Yeah. Yeah. But being together in a sacred space. Um, I don't know. Do you find when class is over, you just you're in a zone for a while? Do you, or do you have to sort of pull yourself into another space? I mean, do you work with your own energy this way, coming in and out of a class? What does that feel like? Yeah, that's really good. We encourage students at the end when they're really feeling peaceful and entering into that alpha state, and there's that just feel good energy. Stay away from the cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, to just stay in touch with it okay, and not lose connection to it, even if it's a very small percentage, and that's part of the training, so that it becomes sustainable. Yeah. One of my teachers taught me that we all go through through cycles of remembers and forgets, ah. or a feeling like, like we're in flow and then feeling like we're in struggle, yeah. feeling at peace and open and in love, and then, and then yeah. feeling fearful and constricted, and, yeah. and the mind sometimes pulses from narrow and constricted to open and expansive. And yeah. And the, the art of Tai Chi is about harmonizing and balancing and strengthening a connection to that yeah. so that you can move through adversity and stress but maintain that yeah. inner yeah. stillness. And, you know, there's one of the things that I was taught was, um, and that we do in the Tai Chi, is when you activate two to three senses, like whether it's just listening to sounds, mm -hmm. being uh, mindfully aware with your eyes, yeah. and just being mindful of your breath, and you, and you sustain those three at the same time, it moves you into that alpha full brain synchronization where the left and the right side of the brain are in harmony yeah 
and it puts you into this active state of meditation. Yeah. And that's really that place. That's the place that we go in Tai Chi. Yeah. It's a, you know, yeah. it's the natural mind in the in the Buddhist tradition, right? It's yeah. That reminds me of a, a DVD I found at the library on a yoga class that, and you can tell it's like all fire breathing through the whole thing, uh -huh. entire thing. I don't know how I didn't last. I I got into it. <laughs> Lots of fire breathing. Oh my gosh! Talk about a zone. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, yeah, it really shifts everything. It, it, yeah. I mean, it worked. Yeah, it does. I mean, before I knew it, I mean, even if you're <laughs> back like this, that tummy is. Why still are those monks so happy in the temple? <laughs> <laughs> They're getting high out there. <laughs> <laughs> I felt intoxicated in our last five minutes. Yeah, I felt like natural high. A natural high. Yeah. They say when you're cold, aren't you supposed to? If you want to get warm quickly and you're outside and you're having a problem, yeah, you're yeah. supposed to do the some tumo practice. I don't and know the, what that is, but the tumo. What you just breathe fast. The tumo with the Tibetans with uh, Herbert Benson. They put oh, the they yes. put the they put the towels on the monks and then they would dry the towels and generate all this heat through different types of breathing and oh, meditation. Yeah. As a way to. Um, dissolve any impurities or you know like burn away the yeah. old karma kind yeah. of thing well we're, we're winding down but we all know fear makes our heart constrict yeah and our blood pressure can go up and we can get stiff and yeah the you fight know, or flight we're not response breathing real well yeah in a fear state yeah. I know I'm not yeah so fight or flight freeze or faint ah and then when, when we're in those places how do we then move through that and martial arts really is all about the so they'll that have skill. this training to ha use wherever they are yeah absolutely yeah they can go home and they can take a room and move through it and put something beautiful on or sit and meditate they have skills yeah they have life skills wellness yeah. skills yeah wellness and, skills. and one of my favorite quotes is serenity is not peace from the storm serenity is peace within the storm ah I think we have to look at the reality of the storm. Yeah, we're in the storm. We're in the storm, but we have that peace inside, so we can move through the yeah. storm. Isn't it magic, though, really, when you, when you have those skills that you, you've got everything you need to, to feel at peace in a world that's pretty tough. It's, yeah. um, and I think, you know, I always say this with all the work that's being done spiritually, because we're more aware of of the terror of this planet that we are growing and by leaps and bounds mm -hmm. it's like the course often talks about the the stretching of if it's yeah. getting worse we're getting better yeah I mean we're definitely surfacing all over the place yeah and yeah. and it's it's a beautiful thing we're it healing is. the planet yeah yeah and when the darkest time comes and that's an opportunity for the light to then also yeah get stronger yes yes it's ever present yeah well I, I'm so sensitive that I, I often will say when I see something I hear something on the news and I feel myself like this and it's like mm. I need to read something beautiful or mm. find a way to calm myself down and know that there is healing and yeah. that we're on our way but I have to say farewell because I'm checking out oh, okay. we'll we're talk to you next week Thank you, my friends, for joining us on Awaken the Dream. We'll talk to Jesse again next week.